You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until tonight Um I'm going to be doing a little uh, wireless hacking fun with Ponagochi. And uh, if, if you just joined, what I was sharing a few minutes ago is that this is, I, I think this will work. I hope this will work. This is a webinar version of something that maybe translates a little better in person. Um, you know, building a, a, a building a piece of hardware and then ending the night with a capture the flag exercise. Uh, we're kind of going to attempt to do that via webinar. I certainly don't expect you to assemble and do all this stuff all in, you know, the hour we have together. But uh, this will make its way to YouTube. So even if you just kind of want to take in the information for now, and, and you can actually, with no Ponagochi, you can still participate in the CTF that will conclude this webinar. Um, but you know, later, if you want to build the Ponagochi, capture your own handshakes, crack them yourself, uh, you can go back to the YouTube version and you know, see everything you, you missed, okay? Um, so uh, let me just uh, scoot right along here. So I'll do very fast announcements and introductions because uh, my, my, my two wonderful virtual co-hosts couldn't be here. Uh, Dan and Paul usually join me for these and uh, I'll shame and blame them in a moment. But uh, a couple quick announcements and introductions. We'll get right into poning Wi-Fi with Ponagochi and then uh, conclude with uh, the CTF for uh, an Amazon gift card. So basically, uh, I'll uh, give you a URL at the end of this this uh, webinar. You'll go to it, you'll download the handshake, you'll crack it, and then you will tweet me the password. If you are the first person to tweet me, uh, if for some reason you're like, hey, bub, I'm off social media. That's for people who enjoy uh, torturing themselves. Okay, then um, email me, somehow get a hold of me so that I can maybe then tweet, hey, contest over, <laughs> someone's already won the gift card. Um, all right, a couple brief announcements. This webinar is brought to you by Light Pentest at lightpentest.com. Um, this is something that I officially launched about six months ago or so. And um, this is gonna be about a 30 second sales pitch. Uh, it is a managed vulnerability scanning and pen testing service brought to you by 7minutesecurity.com. And um, so if you're in the, uh, if you see a need for that kind of thing in your business, I recommend you check out lightpentest.com for a lot more details. Um, it's, uh, it, it's been a very, I think, valuable service for our customers because um, we kind of manage your vulnerability scans and we do a, a uh, we spend one week acting like bad guys, attacking your network um, so that we're constantly not only scanning for vulnerabilities, but finding that hacker low hanging fruit and working together with you to uh, remediate it. I just hate doing sales stuff. But again, these smart business people that consult with me, some of them are probably on the line. They keep telling me, Brian, you gotta, you gotta sell people on stuff. You gotta upsell them on the stuff. So speaking of upsells, if you win today's uh, CTF, not only will you get a $25 Amazon gift card, you'll get a shiny one of these bad boys. Wong, 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 wong. Oh, uh, uh, a sticker mule, reflecty, shiny, light pen test sticker to put on your face or your laptop or wherever you so choose. So, huh? Upsell? And this is all for just $19.99. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay, one more announcement, I think, and that's about all we'll have for announcements. I think webinars are fun. I hope you feel the same way. And uh, I just want to tease you for the next one. I'm trying to do about one a month because I just get a kick out of them. But uh, the next one will be Tuesday, April 14th at 10. You can sign up at 7ms.us slash webinars. Uh, and I want to show you how to create kick butt credential capturing phishing portals. So uh, this is going to be basically me sharing exactly how I set up phishing campaigns for phishing 7ms customers. Um, it's, uh, I think, completely free except for a domain name that that you would need to buy if you choose to use this methodology. Um, and it's been really effective. And I think it's, I think knowing how to do this is pretty helpful, whether you're on the red or blue team side. So, you know, even if you're like, Hey, I, I'm not a pen tester, I don't need to know how to do this stuff. Well, you might want to know how to 
just so you can run some of your, your own in-house phishing campaigns. Cause I've heard from some of my customers who use, use like a, a monthly service to do the phishing for them that um, some of the, the employees are, are just trained to know, okay, I look for the URL that has ID equals J67243. And I know that that probably equals they're tracking me if I click the link. And so I ain't clicking it, you know, um, this, this methodology that I'll go over in the April 14th uh, webinar really gives you a lot more customization and control of what those uh, look like. And um, I, I'm just, I, I, I get, I get really giddy as a schoolboy doing these because um, you know, this is what I do for a living, but it, but it's, it's been crazy effective. So uh, I invite you to come to that. And that's only $20 at, no, just kidding. That one's, that one's free. They're always, they're always free. So uh, 7ms.us slash webinars should have the, the link for that one. Um, I think at the top of that page will be all the information for today's webinar and then right below it, the sign up for April 14th. Um, that's about gonna be it for announcements because uh, I think you know me, my name is Brian Johnson with 7 Minute Security and I love doing pen testing, training and assessments and also do the 7 Minute Security podcast. My good pals Paul and Dan are uh, busy doing work stuff. They're just buried in projects, so they've got good problems, but uh, couldn't be here today. All right, let's, let's get into poning Wi-Fi with Ponegochi. And uh, I have one here that I'll, uh, I'll flash up on uh, the camera a few times. Um, but first, before we do this, and you're gonna need to participate wherever you are, whether you're at home or at work, I need you to, I need you to do this exercise with me and um, don't worry about looking goofy, just please, this is important. My lawyer said that we need to go through this before I can proceed with the content. So we'll just all, uh, just go ahead wherever you are, uh, raise your right hand and then just repeat after me. I, and then you'll say your name. We'll use what I learned here today for good and not for evil. For good. I will not use my Ponegochi to test any networks except those I have explicit written permission for. I accept full responsibility for me and my Ponegochi as we play with wireless networks and understand Brian Johnson and 7 Minute Security are not responsible for my actions. And again, I hope you are doing this, hands up. I don't care if you're in the subway, at a bus station, <laughs> in the middle of a conference room, you need to do this or we cannot continue. Last part of the po Pona Goth. Uh, lastly, mm -hmm. this oath proves without a doubt mm -hmm. that I will repeat anything I see on a screen as long as someone says it first. Kitty, kitty, meow, meow, licky, lick. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have a big dumb animal, but um, my lawyers felt like it would be good to just separate what you may do and not point it back to, oh, but I, this, this dork named Brian from seven minutes something or other, he taught me how to do it, go after him. Okay, we've now, we've now evolved that any actions you take are your own and not that of Brian and seven minute security. All right, here we go. So the Ponegochi, if this is your first time even hearing about the Ponegochi, uh, I took the description right off the website and it includes a lot of acronyms that I will be honest with you, I don't know what they all mean, but I'm just gonna read it aloud. Ponegochi is an A2C based AI powered by, edit, by BetterCap and running on a Raspberry Pi Zero W that learns from its surrounding Wi-Fi environment in order to maximize the crackable WPA key material it captures. This material is collected on disk as PCAP files containing any form of handshake supported by Hashcat, including full and half WPA handshakes as well as PMK IDs. Okay, when I'm describing it to uh, people on a webinar or other customers, I say, this cute little device quickly captures uh, Wi-Fi handshakes off of networks that use pre-shared keys for future cracking. So normally when I'm on a assessment, I'll open up a laptop with Kali and I'll run something like the AirCrack MG suite uh, or Wi-Fi 
and uh, you know, do some fiddling around to finally grab the handshake I need from a customer's network to then go off and maybe I do a password strength assessment where I'm just cracking at that password for about a week. Um, what I love so much about the Ponogochi is it greatly simplifies that because it just, it just does it all automatically. This is pretty much, grabbing handshakes is pretty much why the Ponogochi exists. And uh, if you're wondering too, because I was curious, I was like, Ponogochi, that sounds relatively familiar. What does that name even mean? Uh, well, it comes from, uh, and I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember these. I do, but it's a 90s kids toy called the uh, Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi? Tamagotchi? Um, and it had like a little little digital thing on it. And I, I think he would like feed it and play with it and all that kind of stuff. And then the teachers would take him away. And then the, uh, I think if you didn't give it enough attention or food, it, and then the teacher took it away in the morning, it would die at the end of the day or something like that. Um, and I thought, oh yeah, okay, 90s toy, that must be just a thing of the past. But then I looked it up and uh, they're still selling. I don't know if they're making new ones, but uh, their sales stats said they had sold 82 million as of 2017. So, um, you know, maybe get yourself a Tamagotchi to go with your Ponagotchi. I don't think they do stuff together, but that would be kind of neat. Um, I guess I might have had this slide a little bit out of order. I wanted to show you, uh, I, I'm not going to do a deep dive on the mechanics of the, the wireless handshake that Ponagochi is so wonderful at grabbing, um, but I just like to describe it as, you know, especially when I'm trying to explain the risk to a C-level person who might not be real technical, I'll say, hey, you know, when you we come in in the morning, you fire up the laptop and you join wireless, your machine and your wireless network they do a handshake to kind of say, hi, how are you? And then inside the handshake, you know, sort of hidden from the naked eye, they, they exchange information and somewhere in there is, is the key. It is, is your wireless network password. And so anybody within the airspace, anybody within range of your wireless network can easily get a copy of that handshake as you conduct the handshake. And so if I'm the attacker and I grab that handshake, I take it home, I go to my mom's basement, I fire up my big hashcat, uh, hashcat password cracking server, and I just pound away, boom, 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 on this handshake for whatever, days, weeks, months, years. And if I'm successful, it's awesome, because then I can drive up to your curb, open up my laptop, uh, I've got the key, right? Join your wireless network, I sit in the car, I eat my McDonald's, and it's, it's as if you've let me walk in and plug my laptop right into your network, right? I can do all the bad stuff I could do uh, with, you know, not as much stress or effort. Um, so, so that's why this is a big deal. Um, that's kind of the core message I'm trying to get at here is I think, I think the Ponogochi is a wonderful learning tool, you know, for you to take to your clients, your friends, your family. Um, it helps make the case for why you want to have such a strong wireless password, because as far as grabbing that handshake, it's, it's child's play, you know, like literally it's, it's fun. It's, it's stuff kids can do. My son uh, begged me to be able to bring one of these <laughs> to school. And I said, Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Pump the brakes, young man. Uh, no. And, and here's why. And he was kind of like, Oh, okay. Okay. But maybe when I go to the high school, I can take it there. And I said, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. All right, so everything I'm going to show you, um, the Cliff's Notes version of today, is at ponagochi.ai. That's the uh, that's the main HQ for the image download, all the install information, all the configure inf uh, configuration information. Um, the things you will need, uh, according to their hardware requirements list, is a Raspberry Pi Zero, a micro SD card, um, a good micro USB cord, and a portable power bank. Now, they give you some recommendations, so you can certainly follow theirs. Um, I did put, if you, look, um, if you look in the link, actually, I think in the webinar link as well, but if you look in the user group link here, 7ms.us slash UG, I've still got it up. Um, I give you links to exactly what I bought for my config. So, um, so I did just use the Raspberry Pi Zero, and I tried to bold and underline that I got the one with pre-soldered headers. Um, so I don't know how well it translates over the camera here, but you see where, where the, the uh, display and the Ponogochi are sandwiched together. 
Um, well, you know what? I'll just, I'll just rip it apart real quick. Um, you want to, well, unless you're good at soldering, which I am absolutely not, uh, you want to get the ones uh, with pre-soldered headers because otherwise what happens is you get, uh, you get your Raspberry Pi Zero and then this piece where the pins are, um, th th this is loose. This is just another piece in the packaging. And so I'm dumb with hardware stuff. So I was, I, I, I pushed it in here and I was trying to rubber band it and do all these things. And yet I'd see all these videos where people are just like, hey, you get your pie, you get your display, you sandwich them together and you're good to go. Your Ponagochi's built. And I thought, what, what am I doing wrong? And I nearly broke one Raspberry Pi trying to get these pins to sit in here. Okay, well, we can all learn from me not reading the manual. Um, get the one, unless you want to solder your own stuff, get the one with the pre-soldered headers. So that's what I linked to on uh, Amazon. And then I got um, this guy here. This is the WaveShare e-ink display uh, version two. So that link will take you right there. And then for power supply, just about anything will work. Um, I kind of liked this Anchor PowerCore Mini. Um, I have not let it run from full charge to death with the Ponagochi on, but um, I think it got me at least through a whole workday. I think I just put it in my backpack and just left it on here at the office. Um, but, uh, you know, really any USB powered charger should, should do you. And then uh, a micro SD card. Uh, I just bought the 16 gig one because they're super cheap. And, you know, I just figure if I get tired of the Ponagochi for a while, I can switch over and, you know, use it for some other project. So, um, so that, th that config there is the build that I, I know works. So um, happy to answer questions if you have issues getting it up and going, but um, if it's hardware, that's not this, I'm going to probably scratch my head and, and do a lot of Googling. Um, yeah, and then as far as putting it together, uh, it when you get the when you get the board with the pre-soldered headers, it really is just as easy uh, as as uh, lining up the pins and kind of sandwiching things together. Um, a couple of words of warning: you you do have to uh, you do have to push kind of hard, uh, but don't don't kill yourself because on the other side uh, you're limited a bit by space. You know you've got you've got this other uh, connector here. So, so you're only going to sandwich it about this much. It's not going to go, you know, black plastic to black plastic. Okay. But this, this is a good solid tight, you know, connection that's not coming off. So uh, push those pieces together. And really your hardware assembly is, is pretty much done. Now we just need to get uh, the software side of things taken care of. Um, so if you just go right to the GitHub page for the project, um, you will, I think they maybe even have a more recent release than this, but just download the zip file. And uh, that has the image in it that you will need to toss onto the SD card. Um, and uh, when I got this download, I thought, you know, I have not, I have not, uh, I kind of missed my old IT days. I hadn't imaged any uh, drives for a long time. And um, there's tons of apps that will do that for you. But I really like this one, Belena, I think it's called at belena.io. Um, and uh, I think they've got a download for, well, yeah, Windows, Linux, and Mac. There you go. Um, and it's just super, super easy to use. So yeah, you download that, you install it, and then it brings up this wizard that just asks for the image. So on the left, I chose the Ponagochi image. In the middle, I choose my 16 gig SD card. I click flash. That's it. You wait about 10 minutes and it's good to go. Now, if you wanted to, you could be done at this point. You could take out that card, put it in the Ponagochi, apply power. It'll power up and start grabbing handshakes. Um, so I recommend, I suggest to you, don't do that because one of the things Ponagochi will do by default is um, as it looks to try to just um, listen to the airspace and grab handshakes gently. If it isn't able to get handshakes gently, then it gets to be a little bit, a uh, little bit of a bully, and it will do deauthorization attacks. So essentially, it sends a signal to access point saying, "Hey, could you briefly kick everybody off wireless so that they reassociate, so that I can get a handshake?" And um, Again, that's what Ponagochi does by default. So I think just out of respect for your neighbors and actually for your own Wi-Fi, 
you want to do a little bit of tuning first. Okay. So what, what you'll have uh, from, from downloading Ponagochi is a, um, a, a config file. So config.yml there. Um, it's got tons of settings you can get into. I'm only scratching the surface on them. Um, but my main concern is I did not want to uh, do deauthentication attacks against, um, you know, as we said in the Ponagochi oath, we're not going to do this kind of stuff against networks we don't have written permission for. Um, so what I did is, is under the whitelist setting here in the config file, uh, I, I put in single quotes, you know, my, my network. What I was interested to learn later, though, is that Ponagochi still grabbed a handshake um, off my network. So the important thing to know here in this whitelist is that, you know, you can put in as many networks as you want in this list. Um, it is still going to try to passively grab handshakes from those networks, but it is not going to do um, deauth attacks. So you just need to be uh, aware of that. And um, I put an issue, I raised an issue in GitHub to say, could we have a, a, a config flag that just says, don't, don't touch at all any network unless I specify it in, in a list. And the response I got was, no, nah, this is not really what Ponagochi is for. And they, they just closed the issue. Um, but my, um, uh, my pal, Matt, who came to the, the user group meeting, um, found this setting that we can put in the config file that gets Ponagochi to be as gentle as it was designed to be, I guess. So if we put personality, deauth, false, what that will do is have Ponagochi not do any deauth attacks against um, any networks. But my understanding is it will still passively collect handshakes. So you just need to be aware of that, right? Um, especially when you're on, on assessments, it's going to get handshakes for other networks. And we just need to, you know, understand that and accept whatever risk and, and legal hot water that might get us into. Um, the other uh, couple of settings you might want to play with, number one on the top, Ponagochi, why not change your name to, uh, what did I name mine? Uh, 7M, 7M Mesagochi, very not creative, um, but you know, name it something fun. And then at the bottom, you see that setting for display type inky color black that I think I've got on the next slide. Yes. Um, that you want to make sure is right. Otherwise your display is never going to light up. Um, so if you end up getting this guy that I recommend to you, uh, the wave share two, then uh, where it says type inky, you want to erase inky and put wave, uh, wave share underscore two. And yes, I put in wave share two without a, <laughs> without a underscore and it didn't work. It turns out, here's the thing, free tip. Well, thanks for coming to my TED talk. Turns out computers kind of need to be told what to do and they don't just creatively guess what we might want them to do. So wave share underscore, underscore two, uh, that'll get you going. Um, and then you can stick the SD card in your computer. Uh, it'll mount a, a boot share like this, like I'm showing on my Mac. And then you drop that config file right in the root of boot, okay? The root of boot. And then you are ready to apply power. Now, an important thing to remember, let me make sure I show this to you. Well, it might look backwards to you, but the, um, the edge most uh, uh, USB port, okay, this guy over here, um, that one is uh, just power, okay, so if you're just ready to boot it up, throw it in your bag and start pwning networks, that's the one to, to plug into. Later, we will see that if you plug into the second USB connector, uh, that allows us to SSH in and then pull those handshakes off, okay? But for now, for first boot, just plug into that edge USB connector, uh, and then wait, wait about, uh, I think it takes about three to five minutes first boot. You'll see a message like this that it's generating crypto keys and such. Um, I don't know what happens if you do interrupt the boot process, but I wouldn't really uh, recommend it. Um, and then uh, you, you should see, you know, I think after initially applying power, I think within about two minutes, you should at least see the display. If you're seeing just blank after five minutes, then uh, something's probably jacked with the config file. Uh, has been my experience. Um, and then uh, you'll start seeing this cute face and it'll start being expressive as it, as it uh, goes after networks. 
And um, on the Ponagochi site, there's a nice um, legend to what all the different things mean. So you can kind of see uh, right below the face, uh, it says Poned 7. So that's the number of handshakes captured since your last power on of the Ponagochi. Um, and then in parentheses 18, that's the total number you've gotten um, across the, the whole lifetime uh, of the unit. Um, oh, and let me see. I'm sorry. There was a, there was a question. Let me just pause for a second. Uh, Brian asks, some of the things I've seen suggest adding a hardware clock. Do you actually need that? Ooh, good question. I've not looked into that, Brian, and I don't run one. Um, so, so sorry. I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I guess I'm, th there's so much you can do with this and I'm kind of using it in its most basic setting. So I'm, going out, grabbing handshakes, coming back and using them as part of password cracking exercises. That's kind of been my, my uh, primary use case. Um, all right, let's see here. Um, yes, okay, so th this, this was a slide from our uh, user group meeting. Uh, I was telling them, hey, you wanna see uh, down at the bottom there, the you can hack me access point. That means you've got that handshake and now you can go off and crack it. Um, you can hack me will also be the network of the handshake file that I give you at the end of this webinar for you to run off and try to be the first one uh, to crack. But once you start seeing things in the bottom there with network names, um, that network name in brackets is your most recently popped network. Not popped, I shouldn't say that. Your recently, your most recent handshake captured network, okay? So um, let's say you're just doing a quick POC and uh, you can hack me. That's the network you wanted to grab a handshake for. Awesome. You grab it. You can now uh, disconnect power. You can flip over to the second port. Okay. So again, edge most port that now has the X on it. Uh, that's the primary power port. Now we're going to flip over uh, to the secondary, which gives us power and uh, network access. Um, this was one area that during the in-person workshop, people had a little bit of, uh, we had a little bit of trouble, especially on Windows machines, for some reason, um, getting this to work. So um, when I plug in my Ponagochi, I get uh, another network device pop up on the left there, that RNDIS, blah, 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 gadget. Um, but it was, <laughs> for me, it was easy. I just, just click on that, um, set my IP address to 10.0.0.1. Um, if you're on a Windows device, just look under network control panel. It should show up as something. I don't know if it'll be like network connection and then the next number of whatever you have installed, like four. Um, but you set the properties on that, statically set the IP to 10.0.0.1. And then um, you can run, well, uh, what I do is uh, run a continuous ping to 10.0.0.2. And uh, when you see that start responding, you'll know that you got your network settings right. Um, and then you can uh, now SSH in, and you'll SSH in as user pi, P-I, to 10.0.0.2. Default password is Raspberry, and we always want to make sure we go in and change that, right? Even though you may not be throwing it on a, on a, on a LAN, you just feel like the security guy in me has to say, change it from the default. Um, and, and, then you're, and then you're in, and if you go to uh, CD slash root slash handshakes and do an LS, you should see a bunch of uh, handshake files named after the networks you captured them from. Uh, and the extension is uh, PCAP. Now, there may be a more elegant way to do what I'm about to show you. Um, but what we wanna do to be able to pull these back to like Hashcat, to our own machine, to start cracking them, um, we need to be able to uh, get access to them in the primary, users home folder. So the bottom command I have there is just me copying all those PCAP files to the home folder of the Pi user. And the reason that I do that is so that when I SSH in, uh, uh, sorry, SFTP in with something like this, with something like FileZilla, oh, I, I cut it off the top, I'm sorry. This is FileZilla, which is a free uh, FTP and SFTP tool. Um, but as you can see in the upper left there, I am SFTPing into 10.0.0.2 as user pi. And right there, if you look on the right side now, in my home folder, there's all those handshakes that I copied over. Um, I guess you could set up the pi so you can SSH in as root. And then 
pull the handshakes back that way, but I figure let, let's not make this too complicated, right? Let's just copy those PCAP files to home, uh, SFTP in and pull them back. Okay, so now you can download those files uh, to your, um, you know, to your local machine and uh, get ready for cracking. Now, um, you might have noticed in their current format, in their current state, um, they end with a .pcap extension. Um, in order to get those pcaps converted over to something that uh, a tool like Hashcat can crack, um, we need to run a bit of a conversion. And that's what I got a screenshot of here. Um, so, and maybe, you know, maybe somebody can, can chime in on the chat. I, I don't remember if when you download just plain old Hashcat and install it, if you also get Hashcat utils or not. Um, I just don't remember. But inside the Hashcat utils subfolder is a tool called cap2hccapx. So if you kind of follow that top command there from left to right, we are running that binary. And then I'm providing the uh, name of the dot cap file uh, or pcap file space, the file I want to convert it to. So the file you want to convert it to will end in dot hc cap x. So hopefully that makes sense. Run the binary, provide the file name you want to convert. And then the second part is what you want to convert that file to. And then it's, you'll see um, something uh, uh, like in the middle of the screen there, you see how it, it found uh, there were several handshakes and it says, okay, cool, written six WPA handshakes to that file. When you see written X number of handshakes to blah, 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 your file, you know you're good to go. Um, if you see, shoot, I don't, have a, I don't have a picture of the error message, but if you don't see that a number of handshakes were written to your output file, uh, something, something didn't happen. You didn't get a, a, the handshake is corrupt, something like that. You might, you might want to try again. Um, I find that, um, even in my testing, when I try to give, when I tried to, um, only have, um, actually, I think what I did, I think I was in the middle of a parking lot, powered up the access point that I had, um, so that Ponagochi would only try to attack it. Um, you know, it, it can take a while, uh, you know, to get the initial handshake, but I still just, I left it up for a long period of time just to make sure I would get a, a clean capture. Um, but that's what you're looking for. Okay. Written blah number of handshakes to uh, your output file. And then, um, then using Hashcat, um, this is the format you can follow to actually try to crack uh, the handshake. Um, so left to right there, we're running Hashcat. Uh, the TAC M says, what mode we are gonna set Hashcat to. So if you've done cracking in the past, like maybe um, you've tried to crack Active Directory um, NTLM hashes out of Active Directory, uh, you might see that you, you set the mode to 1000. Uh, here we are specifying mode 2500, which is for WPA and WPA2 handshakes. Okay, so mode 2500, provide the name of the uh, captured file. And then um, specify a word list. So um, I pointed to rockyou.txt. That comes with Kali Linux. Um, uh, and here, here may or may not be a hint that will help you if you decide to participate in the CTF. Um, you can use wildcards in your specification of word list. So let's just say in slash user slash share slash word lists, I had rockyou.txt rockyou1.txt, rockyou2.txt, and rockyou3.txt. When I specify my word list, I could do slash user, slash share, slash word lists, slash rockyou asterisk.txt. That will tell Hashcat to look for, or, and, and try to crack against any word list that starts with rockyou, okay? Again, that may or may not be a hint that will help you in the CTF coming up in just a few moments. Um, and then I, because I was running my cracking on a uh, system that does not have any uh, GPUs installed, I specified the, the TAC TAC force flag. Um, if you've got, you know, if you've got a, I guess we'll call it a proper cracking rig with GPUs installed, you don't need to add that. But I just wanted to put that there because, um, 
Uh, I know some of you would, would maybe just are going to run the CTF in a VM. And if you don't specify tac tac force, I think it'll just kind of barf up on you saying, ah, you don't, you don't have the hardware to, to run this, I, which I believe is just a warning saying this is going to go super slow and uh, really rev up the fans on your laptop here. So adding the tac tac force just says, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. Let's do this. Okay. So we are at, we are at the moment of truth. Oh my gosh, that went super, super fast. Um, we are at the CTF. Uh, let me give you, let me do this. Let me give you the hints. Let me remind you of the rules. And then uh, we'll pause briefly for questions. And then I will drop into the deck here, um, the URL with the handshake that you need. Um, but I thought rather than just be like, you know, it's like telling a group of kids like, okay, it's the last day of school. And then the bell rings, you know, are you going to get any information to those kids after that? No, you are not. Um, so here's, here's a couple hints that may help you with this CTF. There is a wonderful list of um, called sec lists, list of um, previously breached um, passwords. I think there's um, uh, what else is in SecList? I always download it for the passwords, but it's a treasure trove of information. And um, the, the, there is a passwords section of SecLists that I think would serve you well in the CTF if you wanted to, you know, maybe go download it uh, right now. Uh, so there's hint number one. Uh, hint number two is to uh, watch for partial wins. Okay, so... I, I don't know exactly how I did this, um, but if, if, you, if you go after cracking this um, handshake, um, I don't know if maybe I had the password set to one value and then reset it to the value that you're going to find. Um, but I was like, why isn't, my, why isn't my cracking working? And I was doing too many things too fast and found out, oh, I, I really did find the key I was after, um, but, it, but it shows recovered keys five of 12. So maybe somebody more well-versed with Hashcat can tell me, um, maybe this means because there's so many handshakes in that blob, maybe I had the password set to you know testing at one time, and then now the true CTF value. So just watch for that, okay? When you, if you do a cracking job and you get to the end of the results, watch what this screen says. You know, if it says recovered five out of 12, you've won, um, you will need to look for, and I probably don't have this in my slides, um, any cracked credentials in Hashcat get written out to a file called hashcat.pot or hashcat.pot file. So, um, so yeah, sorry that this may complicate your, your stuff a little bit, but just keep looking at hashcat.pot or hashcat.pot file. And uh, if you see, hey, here's the you can hack me network and a password, ding, 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 you're the winner if that makes sense. Okay. Now, um, I would like you to, if you're the first person to win, if you've got Twitter, please tweet the answer to me at 7minsec, and then I'll uh, retweet that or pin it or something so that, you know, in case you just came for the gift card and you don't care about security uh, and, and you want to be done cracking once somebody won, uh, then everybody will know. Or if you hate social media, which I totally get because I do most days as well, uh, email me, find, uh, come join us on Slack find some way to get my attention and uh, we'll get you your gift card and your flashy, super shiny, reflective guang, 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 light pen test sticker. All right. I'll give me, I'm going to get that URL to you in just moments. Let me just check. Is there any, any questions, any comments before we uh, tentatively adjourn, which I can't believe we ended 20 minutes early, but I also know that y'all are busy. So, um, I'll just wait maybe 30 seconds to see if uh, see if anybody's got comments, questions, especially if you've already had experience with, with Pona Gochi. Maybe you've got a, a Pona Gotcha that you want to share with us. Just check one other place here. Oh, the Q&A. Okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, I had a note to myself. I forgot to do a poll. You know what? Let's do it right now. I'm going to send this to you. <laughs> this poll is called do you like polls? And the selections are, do squirrels like nuts? I'd rather watch paint dry or uh, I'll tolerate them. OK. 
Okay, it looks like, oh goodness, the wow, the resounding is I'll tolerate them. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think I meant to put in a much more brain challenging poll. I've never got there. Okay, 67%. I'll tolerate them. One person I'd rather watch paint dry and one do squirrels like nuts. All right, good. I'm glad we settled that. All right. Well, here's what we'll do. I'm gonna show you the URL and, and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hang out. For a little bit. Maybe that's actually good that we have potentially 20 more minutes um, because maybe you're going to have problems downloading the file, converting it, whatever. But here we go. I'm going I'm to shut up and show it. Okay. Right there is where you want to go. 7ms.us slash secret hyphen or dash handshake. Go for it. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna do this and do that and do this and do send this at US slash secret. <laughs> Make sure it actually got up there, right? Might as well do that. I'm gonna bring that over to this screen. There we go. So there's the cap file for you to download off of Dropbox. Should I have tested this all before you got on the line to make sure it all worked? Of course. Uh, will the link stay up after the webinar? It, it will. It will. I mean, but please don't share with your friends because I mean, they didn't come, you know, they didn't make the effort that you did. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it up. Um, so that even if you, even if you got to run now and you want to practice later, uh, go for it. Um,